each of these people is a human being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, it seems to me there are two mistakes you can make. They're the exact opposite in trying to understand Washington and the founders. The one is to canonize them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to mystify and mythologize them. And there's a natural tendency to do that, um, or at least there was. Within the academy, as you say, the, op the exact opposite trend obtains now. Um, if you were a doctoral student at Harvard or Yale and said you wanted to write your dissertation on Washington's presidency, you'd be committing professional suicide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Washington and the founders are often perceived as the you know, instigators of racism, classism, imperialism, patriarchy, and all the evils of the world. I think these are mirror images of each other, these two interpretive postures. Um, and both of them are cartoons. And I think the distinguishing feature of much of the best work done on the founders over the last 15 years, and there's been this surge of interest in, in readers, too, mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. Some of these books have done very well, thank God. <laughs> Your it's, child's education depends on My child's from education that, yeah. depends on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that flawed greatness, flawed greatness, in which it's almost like when we're young and we look at our fathers or our parents, we first of all regard them as all uh, all powerful and omniscient. And then we go through a phase, at least my children went through a phase, where we could do no right. Yeah, uh, you're sui generis. Yeah. Nobody else ever went through that. <laughs> and, um, but then you should be able to reach a more balanced perspective and understand your parents um, as, as fellow human beings who, whose flaws aren't um, uh, the, uh, the only way to define them and yet who are not um, who are not saints. And um, I think we've reached that point now with regard to the founders. Um, so, in the case of Washington, he was avaricious about land. He had a huge ego. Um, he, he, he's not the kind of person you'd want to work for. Um, right. he, he, you know, he was demanding beyond any, any uh, sensible level. Um, uh, and, um, and all that beside the point because He's the greatest leader in American history. His judgment proved impeccable in all the big ways. And we wouldn't be sitting here today. He's the only person that was indispensable in the mm -hmm. revolutionary mm -hmm. generation. Mm -hmm. You can imagine replacing all the others. With what if, but it's difficult to imagine yeah. the revolution succeeding and the United States becoming a viable nation without Washington there. Yeah, yeah. Joe, uh, being a lawyer, I've been trained in specifics, you know. <laughs> that obnoxious characteristic, to be sure. Let me go through some of the things that you said that would be considered less desirable in our today. You talked about his avarice for land right. being uh, one, one such thing. Uh, his uh, great demandingness of his staff being another thing. Although that, that you know, a lot of people are very demanding today. Uh, well, another thing, like his... Commander-in-Chief, or even in his early days as a uh, military officer in the French and Indian War, if you deserted or fell asleep on sentry duty, he had no compunctions about right. stringing you up. Right. In other words, people would beg for mercy, and he'd say, yeah. tough. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a tough taskmaster, and there's a kind of yeah. line in his mind. If you cross that line, yeah. there's no mercy yeah. for you. Yeah. And when, John, when, when Major Andre, the British spy in... Uh, who who, who uh, was implicated with the Benedict Arnold attempt to take West Point? All these people said, "Please let Andre off because he's a good British gentleman." And he said, "No." And then they said, "Well, let's shoot him rather than hang him. He right. wants to be shot." No, he's a spy. Yeah. He hangs and he hung. Yeah. So there's this, you, you know, there's um, and while he does reach. Uh, the shooting was the way uh, an honorable military An honorable yeah. man wanted yeah. to be firing squad, be killed yeah. in a firing squad rather than at the gallows. Um, uh, Hamilton pleaded with him at yeah. that moment to do that. To, to, uh, and even though he gets to the right place in the end on slavery, he's going to disappoint you if you yeah. come to him yeah. with a yeah. 21st century expectation of yeah. Uh, yeah. racial justice. Um, and he dies, and at the time of his death, he owns 319 slaves. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things about him that aren't going to fit neatly in some right. sort of modern sensibility. Right, right. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. 
to view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.